Now here's your host for Forum 50, Television 50's Community Relations Director, Linda Johnson. Good afternoon and welcome to Forum 50. Today we're going to be dealing with an idea. The idea is technocracy. It had its inception in 1919 in New York City when an industrial engineer, Howard Scott, drew together a group of scientists, engineers, and economists who later became known as the Technical Alliance of North America. This Technical Alliance researched and studied how to apply the achievements of science to social and industrial affairs with the aim of providing a better standard of living in continental North America with the least possible waste of non-renewable resources. The Alliance incorporated in 1933 as a nonprofit, nonpolitical, nonsectarian membership organization. Today there are units and members of technocracy in most states and in most provinces in Canada. It is supported entirely by dues and donation of the members. And today I have with me Mr. Rio McCaslin, who's the Director of Technocracy Incorporated, located, he's located in San Francisco, and Mr. John Tobby of Ronard Park. Technocracy, by its very name, is frightening to a lot of people because uh, I think a lot of people today feel that some of the problems we're having, rightly or wrongly, is, is because we don't understand technocracy and we feel like um, the technical aspect has maybe come, has gotten out of control, whether through pollution or uh, use of uh, technology and doing away with jobs for people. Just describe why technocracy would be good for us, if you can. Well, I'm going to started off by asking a question, uh, then I'll answer your question. Okay. What has happened to our economy? Here, the United States, one of the greatest nations in the world, or the greatest nation in the world, finds itself in trouble and uh, having difficulty solving the problems that are confronting, them, confronting us. Uh, Technoxy was born out of curiosity. Uh, several men after World War I uh, decided that they would look into what technology was doing as far as our social structure was concerned. Uh, they had noted that many thousands of the boys were taken out of the industrial processes, sent to war, but at the same time we were able to produce not only for the war, but for ourselves without them. And they wondered how far this would go. And that's how it got started. And uh, now the question is, uh, uh, why are we facing a problem? Uh, technocracy has asked that, and people have asked us why we are facing a problem. And the reason why we're facing a problem is because we have not adjusted to the change that technology has brought as far as our economic uh, and social order is concerned. For the first time in the history of man, uh, the citizens of the North American continent find themselves in a position where they can produce just about as much of anything that they care to due to technology. And, but somehow it has created a problem. Now, when the Great Depression hit us in 1930, it was a result that we had reached that point where we had too much of everything for the system to handle. I was in the milk business at that time, and I can remember we sold milk for five cents a quart. Peas from the farm were five and two cents a pound. Nobody was making money. Then Roosevelt stepped in, and lo and behold, how did he solve the problem? By destroying the farm products, pouring milk down in the sewer, shooting the hogs and cattle mm -hmm. to get back to a sufficient scarcity uh, so that we could start to rebuild again. Now, our process has become so adequate as far as our ability to produce that it doesn't take long for us to catch up and once again get in the same situation of having too much. Okay, now so what, what technocracy is saying then, uh, we're not, are you going to affect the change in production or what are you going to affect, it? What, what would technocracy change for us today? If, if, you know, if, if the principles of technocracy could be applied to the northern continent now, how would we be affected? Would you change uh, the way we distribute? Would you change our social order? Would you change uh, the price and money system? How, what would you do? Well, we would change, we certainly would have to change the system. There's no question about that. Because the rules of the game as it is played today are, were valid 150 years ago. Uh, but since the advent of technology, they're not valid today. Uh, that's why we're having our trouble. We, you take money, for instance, uh, and when we mention money, of course, that hits everybody. Yeah. But money actually is not fulfilling its role. 
In other words, we have the technicians, we have the engineers, we have what uh, we know what we have to do and want to do, but it's always a question of who's going to pay and can we raise the money. And right now, of course, we're going to cut down in our, 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 in our national program, we're going to cut down on uh, the amount of money that's going to be allotted to uh, the people that are poor, uh, the people that are sick, the people that need that, but it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. They say we've got to balance the budget. Uh, but we have all of the material things that we actually need. It's finding a way to organize our technology for the benefit of people. Okay, we are going to have to stop for a pause, but when we get back, we, I would like to talk to you a little bit more about organizing because uh, that seems to be where every system has broken down. There's been a lot of systems pro proposed over the years, and I don't know if you'd like to be loved in, but there's been socialism and communism and groups that say, let's start over and, and change the base that we're talking about, whether incentives to people or whatever, but they all seem to eventually have to revert back to uh, compensating people. There, there seems to be a level that people... You can all start out on one level, but there's always some that, that move up and some that move down, and there has to be some sort of compensation. It seems like the, the human animal loves compensation of some sort, and that seems to be where the money aspect comes in. Well, money has represented to him, uh, to man, of course, the ability to get the things that he needed in order to live. Right. And naturally, it's a great concern to him that he gets his allotted share or as much as yeah. he can out of the thing. But where you, have, uh, where you have reached the point where you can produce a high standard of living for everyone, why money doesn't enter into the picture. Now, let's, let's check back just a little bit. In the old days, back thousand, a few thousand years, we used to exchange things on a barter system. Then when manufacturing picked up and there were more goods available, the bartering system became cumbersome and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So somebody introduced money. Now money has taken, has been very efficient up until the present time. But our, once again, our manufacturing and our uh, ability to produce has risen to the extent where money now is getting in the way. Just the same as the barter system did. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to uh, measure the goods and produce them and distribute them, we have to have an accounting system based upon the energy that it took to produce them. Okay, That's now the on that note, cost. okay, on that note, we're going <laughs> to yeah. come back and we're going to talk about energy certificates because that's what you propose, right? Welcome back to discussion of technocracy. And real before we left, we were talking at the time about possibly money, uh, pricing has outlived its usefulness in today's society. And technocracy has a, an interesting concept that uh, could go one step beyond, and that would be the idea of energy certificates for individuals. Can you explain a little bit what that would be? Well, energy, of course, is the basis of all movement that takes place in a physical world. It, it, nothing would move, there would be no activity whatsoever if it wasn't for the energy. We ourselves are energy consuming devices. We take on food and as a result we have energy. If we stop eating, we soon lose our energy. Our energy being basic then, the actual physical cost of the pr production of goods is the amount of energy that it takes to produce it from the raw material uh, to the used form. And so technocracy suggests that we set up what we call a functional type of social operation. A functional type. Now, you have it today, uh, but it isn't paramount. It, 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 we're not quite aware of it. I, I can give you an example. The telephone company is a functional operation. You pick up your phone, you dial a certain number, and you get results. Now, we may not know how it works or just what takes place, but it does work. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. And it works because the right people are on the job. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. And so I, we talk about a functional government. There's about, uh, say, arbitrarily, around 70 functions that are necessary for a high-energy civilization such as we have. I'll name a few to give you an idea of what I mean. There's education, communication, uh, transportation, and so on down the line. These functional capacities. Now, from within each one of those functions, those that are in the function itself will select somebody to represent them at the top. So that you'll have about 70 men or women at the top of a control board because of their functional capabilities only. Not because they're good politicians or anything at all, it's because they are functionally capable. They've been selected by their own kind. Now they'll select somebody to act as chairman of the board or director of, of, of the uh, 
uh, of the group. So no matter what problem comes up in the functional aspect, there's somebody there that has the answer, that knows what to do about it, because they're all tops in their particular profession. So in essence, are you saying uh, let's do away with a, with a certain level of management, the, the middle class management? Or, or because right now, you know, when you talk about the phone company, okay, beyond the people who keep the phones running, the repairmen and the, and the women who don't everything, there is a level of management up there, the, the supervisors. The superstructure. The super, all right, are you saying that in uh, the energy certificates and technology, there would be no need for that upper well, level? Well, you see, you now you're talking about the superstructure. That's the financial end of it, mm -hmm. you see. Yeah. Now, when you, whenever you weigh anything as to what you can do without and what you have to have, Mm -hmm. uh, you simply eliminate in your mind one or the other to see what happens. Now, if you eliminate the financial structure and you keep the technicians on the job, the thing will function. Mm 